Hello, good morning. I am Dr. Madhuri Chatterjee from BBT Government College, Chimanpura. And today I will be doing uh, a very important topic, uh, which uh, which is part of the first unit. And uh, But I had uh, delayed it for a reason that uh, it's a little difficult for you to understand. But let me try and see whether you get it. Uh, we will be doing phonetics with you. And uh, the meaning of phonetics is the study of the sounds of human speech. All right. How you pronounce, how you utter the sound, how you articulate, that's, that, that's part of phonetics. It's a science. And phonetics is divided into three types. It is the production part, which is the articulatory, articulary, where you're speaking. There's the transmission, which is the acoustic or where you're hearing. And perception is also something which is auditive. Now, uh, you can, uh, that is how you break the sounds. And when you talk of sounds, what do you mean? You mean the alphabets. And when you talk of alphabets, we have 24 alphabets in English. And uh, we can distribute them. We break them into two. We, are, we call them consonants and we call them vowels. So there are certain vowels. And what are the vowels, if you know, where the air comes freely through the mouth. Uh, when you produ uh, produce the vowels, there is no closure of the air passage or narrowing of the passage. Okay, And what are the vowels? You might be knowing. They are A, E, I, O, U. All right. A, E, I, O, U. They are the vowel sounds. And then apart from them, they are the consonant sounds. But when we talk of consonants again, we have to remember that there are certain consonants which are voiceless. All right. And there are few which have voice. Now, what are the voiceless consonants? It is P, T, K, K, F. All right. When we talk of voiced consonant, it is B, D, S, W, and Z. Now, uh, just try and see. I distribute further the consonants into articulation. How do you use the sound when you say P? When you say uh, pitch or when you say page, what is happening to your mouth? Just practice it, you know. It's very uh, difficult uh, to explain without the class or without you people uh, before me. But uh, there are certain sounds which are produced when you touch your lips. There are certain sounds when you, the tongue touches the back of your teeth. There are certain sounds which are produced when... Uh, the tongue touches the upper edge or the palate and that is how you divide the sounds. So yeah, that is how you divide the consonants also. And what are the consonants? I will explain. They are the bilabial, they are labiodental, they are dental, alveolar, post-alveolar, retroflex, palatoalveolar, palatal, <coughs> velar and glottal. Uh, don't get... Uh, you know, don't get tense and don't feel it's very difficult. Try to understand with the help of this map. And this is the map I have. I'll leave you with a PPT also. And there you can see how the palatal sound is produced or how the glottal sound is produced. And how the air passes through the mouth into the air passage. See the mouth. There are the, there is some, there's something like nasal, nasal sounds. There are certain sounds which you have, the air is passing, you can see with the help of the arrow. And this is the uh, usage, this is the way this production of sounds take place. And uh, for the matter, and in order to practice, I will take one word every time, one small word. Let's begin with the word P. Now, first of all, you have to understand where all the word P comes. As I already said, pitch and perfect and page. But there is also like potion, or powdered, or product, or par, people, proper, pepper. Now, in all this case, the P is sounding, it, it, it is coming at the beginning of the word. You know, at the beginning of the word, P comes first. Now, uh, there are a few words I am putting where the word comes in the middle of the word. It's coming in the middle, like happy, supper. Popper, all right, and if you put the P at the end, there is tap, ship, pop. Now, um, 
I have also put a uh, interesting tongue twister because I often feel that you people who are from slightly different cultural background and not the um, native learners and uh, in fact the third generation learners who will be doing English. So it is uh, sometimes difficult for us with our accents to produce the sounds. So I'm leaving you with some tongue twisters which I mean this 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 lecture is a kind of a warm up which I'm doing with you and the tongue twister I'm giving you is Peter Piper picked a piece of pickled pepper. Now tongue twister means something you speak quickly and the same words are there so that it clear it clears your pronunciation. All right? So you have to practice practice and practice. What do you have to practice? Peter Piper picked a piece of pickled pepper. Peter, Peter Piper picked a piece of pickle, pickled pepper. So this thing will clarify that this, this will make your pronunciation better. And the second tongue twister I've chosen is Patsy Perkins and Pamela Paz decided to become partners. Patsy Perkins and Pamela Paz decided to become partners. So this is also something you produce. And this is, I'm talking in the context of the purr sound. And then we come to the bilabial sound, uh, as I have this P, and the second word, as I said, is B, M. What is happening, You, what I am doing is that, and if you also notice, when you speak M, what is happening, the tongue, the two lips are touching each other, the labial, labial, that is, the two lips are touching in order, each other, in order to articulate these words. And the words are P and B and M and V. In all the cases, this is what is happening. But when we have a vela sounds, what is happening? The back of the tongue is against the soft palate. You know, the back of the tongue, you have the map where uh, it is explained. And you have the sound, just say K. What is happening? K. Up. Just notice your tongue, where it is touching. That is the palate. That is a soft palate. T, k, k. It is touching the top of the palate, behind, just a little behind, or j. So that is uh, the sound which are coming out are example. Then I said k, and you have the sound kind, and Cambridge, and Queen, and Canterbury. Uh, see, uh, don't. Try to see the letters here. One is C, there is a Q and there is K also. But concentrate on sound. And this is what I am trying to explain to you. It is the K sound. Kind, Cambridge, Queen, Canterbury. Uh, then you have cactus, doctor is coming in the middle. Actor again in the middle. Bacon, con, you know, it's again in the middle. Then you have simple words like make and bake and kick and cock. Then you have Luke, uh, a sentence, Luke locked the liquor in the locker room. This is a tongue twister I have given you. Luke locked the liquor in the locker room. Luke locked the liquor in the locker room. And second one is Kate called cactus cruel. Kate called cactus cruel. Kate is cat, not cat. It is not caught. So you have to see how you are articulating it. Uh, the, the practice these tongue twisters. Next we come to palisto alveolar sounds, which are articulated by the blade of the tongue against the teeth ridge with the front of the tongue raised towards the hard palate. And the sound is the th sound. Th. The, uh, this is the phonetic alphabet, uh, the phonetic sounds given to you. Uh, th, th. So, what is happening when you say th, thick, thick, and throng? Th. So, what is happening there? Just notice, notice very, very carefully when you are practicing these sounds where the tongue is touching, where the lips are going, where the, uh, where are you placing your tongue? It is at the back of, towards the hard palate. Th. Then you have J. Again, the same place you are putting it. J. All right. Uh, let me give you some example. And Ch. Ch, J, and Th. So you have Ch 
and charm and chick and chuckle uh, this, the, the tongue twister I've given you is the pitcher pitches the catcher catches the watcher watches all right so uh, basically I am making you practice in this lecture the different kinds of sound you also can ask me where you having a problem with the sound and gradually I will come to the phonetic symbols in the next lecture. Thank you so much.